Uh, George, this case, uh, Michael Cohen is the star witness for Alvin Bragg. It centers on a $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels. There's a non-disclosure agreement. What do you think Michael Cohen's motivation is in all of this? I mean, he, he got a book deal as well. Well, first and foremost, let's look at the big picture of exactly what's going on. This is a vindictive display of state power against a political opponent. And what the Democrats have actually done here is normalize the selective and politically motivated targeting of dissent writ large in America, whether they're a Catholic, school teachers, parents, or even a former president of the United States. That's why President Trump is actually on trial today. Regarding Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen is, has been proven to be a liar. He's been convicted. His testimony really means absolutely nothing in terms of uh, this uh, so-called uh, case that uh, Manhattan is uh, presenting to the people. So I think, obviously, he has his own motivations. He was fired by President Trump. He obviously has a very scorned relationship with the former president. He, but his credibility is lacking, and I think that is where the uh, the prosecutors are going to have a major issue moving forward. Like that uh Characterization, I want to stay with that for a second. Normalization, just like when we heard the oral arguments last week of uh, Colorado to the Supreme Court where they're trying to take Trump off the ballot. You know, all of these cases, it does seem like they're trying to normalize. Like, this is just how we do it. We, we, we do these things, and this is the way it's done. I mean, to George's point, you know, and, and both of you, Thane, as well, a New York City former DA Cyrus Vance saying it's never been done regarding this Bragg case. Uh, that I know of, but I think the question is not so much why I didn't do it or why we did it, but why this district attorney is doing uh, this. And it really requires us to be patient and wait. But for Donald Trump, there isn't a lot of time. The clock is ticking, David. There is an election here, and he is also up against a clock for that with all of these cases. But the normalization, speak to that, of how all these cases, it seems like we're in unprecedented territory, yet I guess legacy media tries to say this is just what you do. This is, this is uh, all, all typical, par for the course. First of all, there's no question on why Bragg brought the case. He ran on a platform of getting Donald Trump, period. This is about, talking about a citizen who wasn't even under investigation at the time. The way this is going to play out should be very interesting because, as you mentioned earlier, they brought in a special prosecutor paid for by a major law firm and so on, Mark Pomerantz. His book on this whole scenario is going to play out so that Alvin Bragg may be a witness because his book documents why people in the office said this case should not be brought. As for Michael Cohen, who you raised earlier, uh, a key thing to watch in this case is the testimony of Robert Costello. He was a lawyer for Michael Cohen at some point, and he has already come forward to say that he's prepared to testify that Michael Cohen told him a completely different story about the uh, scenario surrounding these payments and so on. He's a very well-established lawyer, former uh, high-ranking official in the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District. But as to your normalization point, this has been going on for a long time. Remember, the Mueller investigation, this was uh, uh, populated by all Trump haters. Um, that's not the normal way of a process, but we were led to believe that this was a group of people with integrity. It was really led by Andrew Weissman, who's simply the most ethically bankrupt prosecutor I've ever had any encounter with, and I've had a long history with him in a case going on. So, But unfortunately, the media generally doesn't ask these questions, doesn't look behind the scenes. There is a silver lining, timing-wise, by the way, I think, in the decision today. Oh, yeah. And that relates to the, the immunity case in D.C. Remember, the prosecutor just filed their paper saying, among other things, we have to rush forward with this thing, even if you agree to accept it, have an expedited schedule. First of all, that was nonsense when it was made, because the Trump case in D.C. has to be stayed while the obstruction charge is under review by the Supreme Court in another case, in any measure of fairness. But secondly, now we know there's no reason to expedite because this trial is going forward March 25th. Yeah, so much to get to. I know you're all sticking around. And final 20 seconds, though, George, to what David just said, uh, Russian collusion. You know it all too well there. Would you like to put a final point on that as we hit the break and what really has been going on for years when it comes to Donald Trump, as you have known full well and been entangled with it yourself, sir? I would just say that Donald Trump was right from day one. They spied on his campaign. They attempted to not only subvert his campaign, but obviously the democratic process in this country. And at the end of the day, Donald Trump was not the only victim. I was not the only victim. Over 75 million Americans who voted for him were the ultimate victims. And that's something that cannot stand in this country. Got to wonder where the real threat to democracy stands today, um, even though the left likes to paint it as Trump and MAGA. Gentlemen, please stand by. Attorney David Schoen, Attorney Thane Rosenbaum, George Papadopoulos, Newsmax contributor. Much more ahead on Trump and also Fonnie Willis.